Hi, welcome. I'm so excited to be here to share with you our technique for creating the Eat, Drink, and Be Merry holiday tray. It's such a cool project. We're going to be doing some really fun image transfer technique. We're going to be using some Iron Orchid Design Barnwood Plank Stamps and um, I'm going to walk you all through it. So let's talk about the supplies that we need. This is from Home Depot, Lowe's, one of the big box stores. It's already pre-cut and has rounded edges. This is an 18 inch round. We're also going to be using the IOD Barnwood Plank Stamp, some IOD ink and the pads, an assortment of paints. We have Fusion Tough Coat, a clear matte poly acrylic sealer. We have the Fusion Decoupage and Transfer Gel, assorted brushes, scissors, IOD ink, and also this um, image which I have formatted. That link will be included in your email. Let's talk about these images. This is an image that I have created using various elements that I've purchased and then formatted on a program like PicMonkey, Canva, whatever you use. Um, I have actually formatted this image so that it fits the 18 inch round tray. When you get this image, it's going to be a PDF file. You want to print it on an 18 by 12 paper, plain 12 by 18 paper. And it has to be laser printed. We do not want to print this on an inkjet printer, which is what typically we have at home. Um, inkjet uses the individual ink cartridges. A laser printer uses toner cartridges. So it's very important that this is printed on a toner cartridge because it will smear once we put the decoupage and transfer gel on it if it's done with the inkjet. Once we get it printed on the 12 by 18, I have then cut my image I'm then cutting my image so that I either am extremely close, right up close, to my image or in these areas where obviously we can't get around every little bit of tiny detail. I'm just getting close and I'm making a general, like getting generally very, very close to my image. Obviously you're not going to cut into each of these little pine needles, but I do want to get generally as close as I can. This is really a fun process. Um, you can literally do an image transfer with just about any image as long as you have it printed with a laser printer. I have my images cut out along with my wording. Again, with the wording, I'm getting just as close as I can uh, without cutting into the letters. I'm leaving a little bit of a margin around it. And the same with this guy. I've prepped my 18 inch wood round by uh, using two to three coats of um, a white paint. I want a bright white with these image transfers because the paper is white and any halo that remains will disappear into the background. If you were to do this on a dark tray, our ink transfer would not show up. You have to have a light background in order to have a successful image transfer using this technique. So we've painted this, I don't know, I think I put two, three coats of my fusion casement. You could use picket fence. You could use any white paint that you have. And I have given it a nice smooth sanded surface. It's going to have a little bit more of a rustic look. So if we have knot holes that pop through, that's okay. If it's not complete coverage, that's okay. If we're seeing some of the wood grain come through, that's okay too. It's all gonna lend itself to a really pretty finished product. In order to get a good fit, 
I want to line this up and I'm going with the grain of the wood. The grain of the wood is this way. I don't want to put it on this way because then later when we have our barnwood plank stamp that we're using, it's going to kind of look odd if we've got the grain of the wood underneath going one direction and our barnwood plank going the other direction. So we want to line this up so that it is going with the grain of the wood. There is a little bit of an edge here. I want to make sure that my deer head sits right down at the bottom and I'm overlapping I'm overlapping that edge because I don't want any of that showing up so I want to get it over the edge then I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to crease it around that edge so that it fits the outline of my tray and then I'm going to trim that off so then what I have is a nice perfect fit along the edge of my tray. Okay? And remember that's going to be face down because our image will be applied face down. We have the Fusion Decoupage and Transfer Gel. This is a clear gel medium. You can use it for decoupage. Um, and you may ask, question comes up, why would I not just decoupage this image on? I love the image transfer method because it, it almost makes the image appear that it's part of the wood substrate, your, your image behind it. I've used this technique successfully on painted metal also. It works wonderfully does not work well like say on a white enamel bucket. It has to be a painted surface in order for our image transfer to be successful. The first layer of my decoupage and transfer gel that I apply is a very generous layer. We want a nice thick layer on here and you'll smooth out any places where you've got major clumps of it. We don't want that but we want a nice, broad, general area with that. A good, thick layer of our transfer gel. Any excess is going to be removed. I'm gonna take my transfer gel and I am going to apply a very thin layer to my image. And again, it's going to be the print side of the image. Then I'm gonna take my image I'm applying it face down and I'm using a flat surface such as a credit card to then work from the inside of my image to the outside of my image to remove any excess gel. And also to, to form complete adhesion with my wood base. Working from the inside to the outside of the image, I'm applying a steady, gentle pressure. If I were to come back this way, I'd run the risk of lifting my image or tearing it. We don't want that to happen. So from the inside to the outside, I'm applying a steady, gentle pressure. And I'm going to remove all that excess that lies between my image and my surface. If you have an uneven surface, you want to pay special attention to that. Sometimes that may be in the wood grain. Sometimes you might have a little divot, whatever, wherever it might be uneven. You do want to pay special attention to that. Make sure that image is rubbed into there. If there is not any contact between the image and the wood, your image is not gonna transfer in that area. Another thing is you wanna be cautious of any little bubbles that are in here. Make sure they're completely smoothed out. I'm removing all that excess. And being careful not to tear your image. If I were to tear it and I were to mess up, even if something goes wrong later in the process, 
You can just print your image again, kind of sand this back, repaint, print it again, and go for it. What I would suggest is print your image and just cut out a little piece of it and try it on, on a painted wood board just for practice. I had to practice many, 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 many times to get this to behave the way that I wanted it to. Okay. Then I'm gonna take a damp cloth and I'm gonna remove the excess gel just from around the outside of this. I don't wanna get my image soaking wet at this point, not at all. I just wanna get that excess gel off of there. Of course, it dries clear, so we don't have to worry about that. When I apply the words, I'm going to get, again, a nice thick layer of my transfer gel. Remember, any excess will come off. And then a very thin layer on my image. After I've removed all of the major excess, then I'm going to apply a little bit more of a gentle, steady pressure to remove the excess between my image and my surface. Your goal is to get even contact with your image onto your board. You want that whole thing on there. And that's what we look like. We're going to, again, take a damp cloth, remove any of the excess from around it, and then we're good to go. This now will sit for 24 hours. It can sit longer. That's fine. If you are doing this in a workshop setting, which I do a lot, um, now is the time that I would probably divide up my group. I would have part of my group using a blow dryer to dry these completely. It's gonna take a good 10 minutes at least. Half of your class can be painting the edge of your, their board in a contrast color if they would desire that. But again, you want to, if it's in a workshop setting, make sure that this is completely, completely dry. We're gonna let it sit for 24 hours if you're doing this at home and come back to remove the image a little bit later. Okay, 24 hours later, we have got and you're our... you're still wearing the same clothes. And I'm still wearing the same clothes. It's right. <laughs> okay, we have our completely dried transfer. Again, if you're in a workshop setting, you can always blow dry this. You're going to know if you're in a workshop if you need to dry this more when you begin to remove the transfer because some of that transfer ink will not adhere, it'll start to pull off. That means stop and just dry it some more. Okay, I'm using just an assortment of uh, different tools. I've used regular sea sponges, I can use a microfiber, I can use a cloth, whatever is comfortable. You'll get a feel for it. So I'm gonna wet my sponge. I want this just damp. You can always go back and reapply moisture if you need to. If you over soak this, you're gonna have a mess. So I'll start with one little area and I'm just gonna be working around my project from area to area to area to area. I'm gonna start in this one small area and I'm gonna wet my transfer until I begin to see the image coming through. Don't worry, you will see some patches of white. I really don't know why that happens. Um, it's something with the transfer gel. But I want to make sure that I'm wetting this enough so that I am starting to see the image come through my, my transfer. You don't really need to apply pressure. You just need to wet the surface, dampen the surface, I should say. Um, so that you see that image come through. The, the top layers of that paper are soaking up the moisture so that we can prepare to remove them. Okay, when I start to see my image, now I can really start to go to work. 
I'm going to now, I'm going to take the other side of my sponge. Again, I don't want it wet, wet, because if it's too wet, it, you're just going to end up with a gummy mess. And I'm going to gently start scrubbing away to reveal that image that's underneath. It's so cool. This is this is such a cool process. And this is going to require me um, coming back to this area as I work my way around. I'll kind of do this around the tray again. Then I'll come back to this to remove any excess. When I'm doing these images, I tend to choose kind of more watercolory, a little more rustic type of an image so that if you do remove too much of the image, if a little bit comes off that we're not gonna stress about it, it'll be okay, we'll fix it up. But you can see as I scrub, I'm removing the layers, but I'm not removing that inked image. Isn't that so cool? And I also, like now, I know I don't have all the paper off of this, but I don't want to overwork it. I don't want to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. I'm going to um, kind of move on to another area. This area here that I originally wet, I think that I didn't get it wet enough. So, because it's, I'm having a little bit of a harder time removing the paper. I am going to dampen this again and let that moisture soak into those top layers. Then I'll come back to it. I'm going to move on to the next section. With my damp sponge, I'm wetting the area, a small area, until I begin to see that transfer coming through. We want some transparency in those top layers. What we're doing is we're wetting the paper so that it becomes easier to remove. Take your time with this process. Enjoy the process, I guess. Don't try to rush it. Print a few of these and practice on something. Just snip a little part off and practice it. Okay, so now I'm working with my scrubby side and I'm starting to remove the excess paper layers until I get down to my image. Okay, you can see here that on my deer, this eyeball here, I scraped away a little bit more of the image. I'm not worried about it. I can always come back and touch up. That's going to happen. <clears throat> this is not a perfect, perfect process. But it's a fun process. And probably because I just overworked this area. Or I might not have had super good adhesion in that area. Okay, so I'm working my way around this whole tray to remove those first layers of paper. We're almost there. I have a few areas where I have, where some of my image has rubbed off. It's okay guys, it's really okay. We're not gonna cry about it. 
It just means we didn't have the best adhesion. I still make those mistakes. And, you know, you're working with um, so many different variables that it's hard to have complete control over the outcome. But I like this because it's going to be able to, I'm going to be able to show you how I fix this up when I need to. Okay, so let's take a look here. I have actually, my tray is still pretty wet. I have worked my way around the whole tray. Once I have removed the excess layers, I'm going to come back now and I'm going to start with my palm and with my fingers. I am going to begin to create friction on that surface. And all those little layers of paper that are that are still that haze that's on there will begin to rub off. And again, you have to get a feel for the pressure that you're applying. We're going to be finishing this with um, a sealer, so a lot of this haze will disappear at that time. So again, I don't want you stressing about perfection. If you overwork an area, you do run a danger of actually removing too much of the image. You can see that that happened right here for me. But I'm going to fix it. It'll be okay. The magic of some paint brushes and a little bit of paint. Gosh, there have been times that I've done this that I've like completely removed sections of an image. And it's okay. And that's what's happening right here. I can't tell you why. Again, there's so many different variables. Practice makes perfect, and sometimes practice doesn't. And, and you just get what you get. So you can see, I get these little crumbs. And all those little crumbs are is that the more layers of paper that are coming off. See those? Just creating some friction with my palm, with my fingers, to remove that excess layer. But I did want you to see this. This happens. Um, it can happen and it's okay. It just means that I probably didn't adhere it completely, there might have been a, a, a little dip in my board. It's an uneven surface, so that may happen. You can see all of this paper that's still on there, and the more you remove that, the brighter your image is going to become. You may especially notice the excess paper around the edges. Keep working at it until the edge kind of disappears. If you cannot remove all of that little halo, that little edge, it's okay. Um, I have some tricks to uh, fixing that up too. But I tend to be pretty, you know, loose and lax when it comes to this. I will, I will touch up the areas that are important to touch up, and the areas that are not important to touch up, I'm not going to worry about. It's so um, easy to be like ultra perfectionist when you're working on your project this close up. Most people, once you get, you know some stuff on here, a little, uh, little glassware, a candle or two, not going to see those tiny imperfections that you're seeing right now at this stage of the process. We still have a ways to go. So keep that in mind. You can see as I'm continuing to rub, more and more of those little paper crumbs are coming off. This is such a cool process. I find it very relaxing, actually. So 
some of you may not like that tactile sensation. If you don't like that, you can always use a dry cloth. If I get to now where this is pretty dry, I can also just dampen my fingers, very, very slightly dampen, come back in and work on those areas where I still have some of the paper haze. Don't feel like you have to do this all in one setting because you can always re-dampen. Like this area here has quite a bit of a little haze on it. I can come back in after this is completely dry, even if it's tomorrow or three days later, and I can re-dampen this and start to remove more of that haze. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up. We want to get as much of the halo off as we can without rubbing off our image. If you don't get all the halo off, like over here around the pine needles, this can be a little bit of a tricky area. Um, I'm going to show you how we can touch up and fix that up later so that you will never notice. There it is. How pretty is that? Next step, we're going to come in and we're going to touch up some of these areas where I removed too much of the transfer. Um, maybe I applied too much pressure, maybe it was too wet, maybe I didn't have good adhesion in those certain areas to begin with, but no worries, we can touch it up and make it look like it never happened. We have removed most of the transfer using the Dobie scrubber and um, a cloth or whatever, whatever you want to use. I am noticing I still have a little bit of haze on this and um, there's still a little bit of paper left on here. So how I kind of finish this off is I am just dipping my fingers into water, my clean fingers, <laughs> and I'm going to use my fingers and my palm to try to remove the rest of any paper haze that may still be on there. And you'll get a feel for it um, with, your, with your wet palm. The object is that we want to get as much of that paper off of there as we can um, so that there's no haze that's left. So I'm going to be using my palm and my fingers and you'll see if I can kind of get them going over here that um, there's still, if you're still getting like these little crumbs of paper, that means you still have paper layers that are on there. And you might notice it especially around the edges. But we have a little trick for making sure that all of that is gone too. And I'll just re-dampen my hands as needed to um, create some friction. and get any last little crumbs of paper. All right, for these little, little extra areas here that have rubbed off of our transfer, I am going to just use my paints. I've picked out, um, for my lettering, the lettering color that I chose is kind of a burgundy color. So I'm just taking a small detail brush and I am literally just filling in where some of my letters missed. And again, I designed the lettering so that it is a little kind of sketchy. There are some open areas, so it's not perfect. It's okay, we don't need it perfect. It's gonna be just fine. Okay.
Okay, great. We also have his little nose that we're going to fill in. This is just a uh, chocolate color paint. I'm dampening my brush. I'm kind of doing this a little bit watercolory. And as I touch up here, I'm going to also add some of this color, kind of blotch it up throughout here so that it's consistent. I'm creating a more consistent look. But you know what, guys? Once you um, put a little uh, cheese tray on here or a cocktail glass or some candles, like nobody is going to even notice that you once were missing part of the image there. I'll let that dry a bit and then come in and I'll maybe do a second layer. I just build it up gradually where I think I need it. Um, his little eye. Not really super fussy about this because it is more of a watercolor image. And uh, I just don't think it's going to matter in the long run if you miss a tiny little spot. I think the overall effect is perfect. I'm going to come in with my white paint now and a small brush. And I'm just going to kind of smush a little paint into those halo areas, those little edge areas. Sometimes they just get even a little bit discolored because, you know, we're working with our hands and um, different paint, but then I, I also kind of blend it into my background. I'm not going to go around and, and do all of this. Only the areas where I think it's really obvious or that I'm a little bit uncomfortable with. Of course, if you are a perfectionist, you can certainly go around and touch up all of your little halo edges. We're going to be adding another layer of Barnwood Plank stamp over this. So um, a lot of this will be minimized anyway. Again, just anywhere you're seeing a little bit of an edge that's maybe discolored. And if it's not pleasing to your eye, I'm just gonna touch over it, blend it down into the wood background. And um, I think, It'll have a really softening effect on those edges. If you lose some of your pine needles, simply take a, um, a very fine liner brush and a green paint and you can paint a few of those right back in. Nobody will ever know the difference. See, the fact of the matter is, there's no problem that you cannot fix with this project. You can always reprint your letters, paint over this area, and just reapply them, and then remove them again. It's, um, it's, it's really pretty no fail. If I need to, actually I'll show you like how I would just take an ultra fine liner with some green paint if I had to. I keep it loose, I keep it a little translucent. Okay, I think we're good. I don't see anything else that really needs my attention. So we're gonna let this dry completely and then we're going to move on to stamping. If you are doing this in a workshop, um, now is the time to get those hair dryers out, dry these completely so that you have a completely cured surface to work on to apply your barnwood plank stamp. This is barnwood planks. One of my go-to Iron Orchid Designs decor stamps. I love this stamp. 
So it's, a, it's on two sheets, and what it has is, um, I don't know how they do it. It has these multiple textures of barnwood plank looking stamps. Even knot holes and even little plank separators. So I am going to show you how we're going to apply that on this wonderful tray. These are blank ink pads. This is Iron Orchid ink. I mix turmeric with just a touch of black to create a little deeper shade of that golden um, wood tone. You can mix it in the IOD empty ink bottles and uh, then fill your stamp pad. Once I have my ink color, I'm laying my stamp flat. I am applying the ink to the pad. I am not fussy about this being perfectly evenly inked. Actually, I like these to be a little more random. And I'm lining this guy up with the deer's eyes just to get a, to kind of center it up. I'm gonna lay this down, going in one direction here, straight. And now I'm going to just tap the surface. I don't wanna tap over the deer or over the bird. I'm avoiding those areas. You may get a little ink on there, it's okay, but it, for the most part, I'm just avoiding those areas. But I'm using a very, very light touch because I really want a light imprint. I have enough ink on here to then press. I'm gonna take another texture, same thing. I'm going to stamp. And I'm going to line it up with my, well, let's come up here. We'll start at the top this time. I'm going to line it up with my line that was created with the previous stamp. I'm tapping, lightly tapping over, because I want a very, very soft background look. See that? There are some empty spaces. I'm okay with that. No barnwood plank has been perfect. So um, I have enough ink in here that I can probably come down and apply some of that texture down below. Pretty. I like it. Okay, we're going to pop that guy aside. I'm going to take now another texture. And you can use whatever you want. Whatever appeals to you. I'm laying my stamp flat. I'm stamping the textured side. I don't mind if it's not perfectly stamped or inked. In fact, I'd almost rather it isn't. And I'm gently rubbing or gently tapping with my fingers. I'm avoiding the bird. I'm avoiding these leaves as much as I can to get that impression. And then I'll finish off with a little bit down here. Okay. I'm going to take this guy. It's a little partial one. And I want to finish this off over here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Restamp. This is so fun. I'm telling you, I love the stamp. It's so fun to use. Okay, and I'm going to just add a few more here in the empty area. Maybe just a little there. Burn with planks. Pretty cool. If I wanted, here's a little trick I'll show you. I can also just take this little edge here and I can ink just that edge. 
if I wanted a more defined edge on this plank. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh yeah, much better. I like it. I don't know that we need it here, but we're going to do it anyway. Make a little bit of a narrower. Here we go. I am choosing a couple of spots on here between my planks to add that little separator. Pretty cool, huh? And let's see, I might add one over here. So amazing. And I don't go too crazy with this. I, I don't want to overdo it. And I'll pop a little one, maybe we're just down here. You kind of have to know when to stop, right? But all of a sudden, we have that appearance of the barnwood planks. These are the knot holes. There's two different knot holes. You can either stamp the whole thing, or what I like to do is I like to stamp just half of it and then apply it along the edge of one of the planks. So I'll do one there. Again, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to have knot holes everywhere, but uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll put one right down here. And then I think I'll try more of a whole one somewhere. I think we're done. It's just enough. It's not too much. Okay, once we have finished all of our stamping, you want to let this dry completely. If you're doing a workshop, blow dry it until it's really, really dry. We want our ink, we don't want our ink to um, smear when we put the top top coat on. This is Fusion Tough Coat. I'm just using this is a um, clear polycrylic matte sealer. I've swirled it to make sure that it's completely mixed and I will apply this to my tray once everything's completely dried. You have to seal your paper transfer image. I apply a thin coat. You can add a couple of coats if you want to. Um, I usually only use one coat, but it's kind of your, your preference. Make sure you catch your edges so that you don't have drips. So this is a second coat on this tray. Um, I have applied my handles. You could also put a Lazy Susan mechanism on this. Or you can just hang it, put a hanger on it, and hang it as artwork. So you would want to put all of your sealer on before you do any of those things to finish it off. All of the supplies that were referenced on your list to complete this beautiful project are available at ellenjgoods.com.